Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. We've talked quite a bit on uh, these video blogs about the dangerous uh, effects of having what is called metabolic syndrome in terms of various issues in your body. Uh, obviously, uh, the relationship to uh, inflammation by having elevated blood sugar as one of the parts of uh, the metabolic syndrome, the role of inflammation in cardiovascular disease, in cancer, uh, in brain degeneration, for example, including Parkinson's and uh, Alzheimer's. First, let me just redefine what this metabolic syndrome that you're all hearing about really is. It's a constellation of issues, uh, including uh, elevated blood pressure, uh, having problems with the blood lipids, which, which we call dyslipidemia, uh, having uh, increased weight circumf uh, waist circumference, a big belly, and uh, blood sugar control uh, as well. So these, these four areas tend to uh, work synergistically to lead to events in the body that uh, promote degeneration, that promote inflammation. We tend to think about metabolic syndrome mostly in terms of it representing a cardiovascular uh, risk uh, issue. Uh, but now we're starting to see uh, certain relationships appear relating uh, the metabolic syndrome to brain uh, issues as well. I've recently uh, provided a video blog about the relationship of metabolic syndrome and brain degeneration. Now we see a new report appearing in the journal Neurology entitled Association of Metabolic Syndrome uh, and change in the unified Parkinson's disease rating scores. And let me break that down. <clears throat> this is a study that looks at the relationship of individuals either who have metabolic syndrome or who do not. All of these people have Parkinson's disease and it followed these people uh, over a number of years. It was a study of around a thousand individuals, uh, followed them over three years uh, to determine uh, who degenerated more quickly in terms of what is called the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale. What this UPDRS is, is a scale that clinicians use to rate uh, how their Parkinson's patients are doing. It looks at a number of issues. It looks at motor function, both subjectively on the uh, part of the patient and objectively, perhaps, on the part of the examiner. It looks at an individual's ability to engage in what are called activities of daily living, uh, self-care. It looks at medication uh, complications, etc. So it's a composite score that indicates perhaps the level of disability rating a Parkinson's patient. The higher the number, uh, the worse the patient seems to be doing. Now, what the study did was, again, looked at Parkinson's patients and compared those individuals who had metabolic syndrome with those individuals who did not and evaluated them over a three-year period of time. And what they found was really quite compelling, that over the three-year period of time, both groups deteriorated in terms of their functionality, but those who were classified as having metabolic syndrome deteriorated much more aggressively. In other words, their score increased much more dramatically. Uh, and in fact, you can see that here on this graph. In the upper uh, curve are those uh, individuals who have metabolic syndrome or had metabolic syndrome during the time of the study. And you can certainly appreciate the degree of worsening on their unified Parkinson's disease rating scale in comparison to those individuals on the bottom uh, part of the curve of the lower graph that shows less deterioration. So the importance of this study is that paying attention to uh, the various parts of the metabolic syndrome in terms of making appropriate lifestyle choices uh, does seem to have an effect on an individual's progression if he or she has a Parkinson's disease. You know, the medications that are used for Parkinson's are purely designed to manage the symptom. Uh, uh, symptoms. There is no medication that is offered to Parkinson's patients, per se, that is designed to help with the underlying disease process, i.e. to slow down the rate of degeneration. And here we see that lifestyle choices, which affect the development or not of the metabolic uh, syndrome, uh, may be really important uh, for that individual. Now we've seen relationships of metabolic syndrome 
with cardiovascular disease, with risk for various forms of cancer, uh, even with brain degeneration and dementia, and now specifically seeing this report that relates metabolic syndrome to the rate of progression or decline, if you will, uh, in Parkinson's disease. So it is yet another call for gaining control over blood pressure, losing belly fat, uh, and also uh, working on the diet to help uh, improve what we call dyslipidemia or these uh, inappropriate changes in the blood fats. All of these things can be addressed uh, with lifestyle change, certainly with diet and exercise. Certainly if medications are indicated for the management of high blood pressure or for lowering blood sugar, uh, those are appropriate as well. Well, this is interesting information, and I hope you enjoyed our time together today. We'll talk soon. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Bye for now.